Hmm, I forgot to mention. Okay. So what I wrote all up here is for the first half. For the for the first half, i.e. the lower half. This is all true. Okay. So for the first half, then it's that the number is the number that are below you. So there are 12 numbers below 19. There are seven numbers below 14. There are three numbers below 18, actually technically, or excuse me, eight, nine. So eight's the highest one there, but nine would be the highest value in the class, okay? Then the four is where the middle happens. So this is the lower half, right? Then the four, the parentheses one is the middle, right? Called the median, we'll learn about that in chapter three. And then for the upper half, hold on, the higher half, the second half, second half, which would be all the ones that are past the parentheses. Then the number to the left shows the number that are above or equal to the lower limit of the stem. So let me give you some examples here. Um, the first, let's see, so when you look at 15, right, so when you have Oopsie. When you have 15 to the left of the stem, there are 15 numbers in the data set that are above or equal to that number, which is 25, right? The lower limit of that class, if you will, okay? And I don't want to list them all out because there's so many of them, but there's 25, there's 27, there's 31, there's 31, etc. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Um, let's look here. What about the six right here? So when you see the six to the left of the four stem, means, oops. There are six numbers higher than 45, right? Or higher than or equal to, I should say. Higher than or equal to 45, right? Okay, so let me, it's kind of confusing, so let's start again. So look at the ones, here's, here's the middle. See where the parentheses happens? Okay, so that's where the middle's gonna be. So when you look at these ones, this 3, the 7, the 12, that means there's three numbers lower than 9. There's seven numbers lower than 14. There's 12 numbers lower than or equal to 19. Okay. Then you hit the middle range, right? There's where the middle happens in that center, 21, 23, 24, 24. Some, one of those is the median. You don't know which one, but one of them is. Okay. And then after that point, you start counting the ones that are above you. So uh, before the parentheses, you count the ones that are lower than you. After the parentheses, you count the ones that are higher than you. So there's 15 higher than 25. There's 13 higher than or equal to 31. There's 10 that are higher than or equal to 36. There's 7 that are higher than or equal to 41, and so on. So it kind of helps you delineate the two halves of the stem and leaf plot. All right, so very hard to read, very confusing, but hopefully it makes sense. And in the end, what really matters to us for the most part is actually the middle column, which is the stems, and the far right column, which is the leaves. All right, now last question about this particular stem and leaf plot is how did the split stems um, differentiate these two graphs? Because these are both split stems and they're pretty much the same. Um, how do they look different than this, which is the actually exact same data set? Well, the split stems, let me type it up, hold on. There we go. So splitting up the stems um, shows the spread of the data a bit better. So when you look at this one with the not in split stems, everything's kind of mushed in and it's kind of hard to, to get a gauge at how spread out the data was. But when you look at them when they're split up like this, you can see that kind of students were all over the map. Um, there were a lot of students at the low, there were a lot of students at the high. You can also see there's a little bit more going on here in the low numbers than there is at the high numbers. And um, you can see that there's a lot of spread to this data set. There we go. I just typed that up. In other words, splitting the stems just makes it easier to read and easier to get a gauge of what was going on. Poof. And that's what I typed up.